All right, just a quick guide here to using Stop Motion Studio to capture some stop motion. First, you press a new movie after you open the app. And uh, then, of course, you have this view where you can begin to add some footage. You can see I've arranged things here inside of the cardboard box. Um, and you can add images and titles from the plus sign if you want. But for now, we just want to capture some things. You can also adjust the frame rate, what frame rate you want to capture your movie at. There's some fading effects. There's some cropping. There is some uh, foreground effects you can put on. And there, of course, is also stuff like the resolution and if it should loop or finish when it's played back. But for now, we just want to capture some images. And um, be mindful of in the left side here, this is the onion skinning. It's basically the one making the previous image that we captured semi-transparent, so it's easier for me to adjust accordingly to where the, uh, the figure was before I began to move. So look what happens here when I've captured my first image and I begin to adjust my um, onion skinning. You can see now there is sort of this faded version of where the figure was before this movement that I'm doing now. So this enables us to actually do something where we can quickly both adjust for errors, but also show how much do we want to move between each frame. That is how radical, or how rapid should the movement actually be, how detailed we want, do we want things. And you can see here now to speed things up, the figures here are very simple. There are no moving hands or parts or anything. Um, and of course, you could do them much more elaborate in your own sketches. This is just for show. Here I'll just show that a, an idea pops out of her, the girl's head. Um, but of course, it's again up to you. But make sure to capture a lot of frames here. When you get the uh, uh, sort of where process up and running, uh, you will get the hang of it rather fast. And do be mindful, as you can see here with my background, it moves around a bit. So a good advice is if you have it, use some sticky tack or some other kind of uh, easy to use gluing material to sort of stick the background uh, so we don't uh, move around with the characters, so you don't get these small um, errors in the movement. It doesn't ruin the movie, but of course it looks nicer if everything uh, is smooth and it, the only things that are moved are actually the things that you move manually. You can see here now I added a mouth, so we can actually quickly add some emotional change here. Now the user is happy because he got this digital um, service, basically. And um, now I'm soon finished actually capturing images. We have 70 images. We can begin to scroll through them to actually see, and we can add and delete images if we made some mistakes by holding down the finger. And um, then we can, of course, begin to adjust what frame rate do we want this to be played at. You can see right now, I think it is uh, five frames per second or something, three or five frames per second. You can see that gives us a eight, uh, 18 second movie. And we're going to adjust here 10 seconds, 10 frames per second, for example. Um, so something like that. And then we can begin to adjust frame rate. We can adjust the cropping of the movie, as I'll show you here. Um, you can also do that in Premiere, of course, but it might actually just be as beneficial to just do it inside of uh, the software if you can do it. But be careful of not doing these foreground things too much because they are really, really hard to remove again in post-production. So only use them if they make absolute sense. But it would often be a better idea just to do it with green screen effects in Premiere. But of course we can do some cropping and that often makes sense like that. But there you, there you have it. We actually have a movie now. So the next step will be for us to figure out is the frame rate right. We can also adjust the speed duration in Adobe Premiere if we want, but if it's okay here, then it works. And of course, we can add some more images some title and credits, but in most cases, wait for, to do that in Premiere. What we do want now is to select it, save it in some way so we can actually export it. And you press the select button in the upper right, select the movie, and then press in the upper left, press the sort of share button in the software and then choose either export movie or export all images and do the animation manually in Premiere, that's up to you. We press export movie here. And then you can choose, should it be shared to your Dropbox, should it be saved on the phone, how will you actually choose to save it? Um, I'm saving it here uh, onto the phone actually, so you can transfer it manually into Premiere and then it will save. And there we are, that's Stop Motion Studio for you. Hope it helped.